What's up everybody, today I wanted to make a video for you guys going over everything we need to know going into the Ahsoka series, covering the Ghost Crew, Ahsoka's past, and Thrawn. At the very end I'll go over some of the rumors swirling around about the show, and they're from making Star Wars and Bespin Bolt into the greatest Star Wars scoopers out there, so just sit back and enjoy the history of these beloved characters. Let's start off with Sabine Wren, the Mandalorian who loves blowing things up but in her own unique way, using her explosive spray paint and art to get the job done. You also see her wielding Ezra's green blade in the Ahsoka trailer. She's the daughter of Ursa Wren who belonged to Clan Vizsla during the Clone Wars show before Darth Maul murdered Pre Vizsla, which led Lady Bo Katan to create Clan Kreese, or as they're more popularly known, the Night Owls. She fought alongside Ahsoka and Commander Rex in the Siege of Mandalore against Maul. And Gar Saxon, this would be the last time we see her until she appears again in Star Wars Rebels when Sabine returns to Mandalore where she started Clan Wren who associated with Gar Saxon and the Empire. Sabine's return in the Ghost Crew's Beam of Hope encouraged Ursa to deviate from Saxon and the Empire where she rejoins Bo-Katan and many other Mandalorian clans in yet another Mandalorian Civil War. Sabine would remain on Mandalore for some time until the rebel base on Adwan was under siege from Grand Admiral Thrawn and the rebels needed all the help they could get. Oh, before we move on from that actually, I should mention that before Sabine goes back to Mandalore, she retrieves the Darksaber from Maul on Dathomir and much like in the Ahsoka trailer, was trained by Kanan and Ezra to fight with the Darksaber which seemingly translates into this series. But after she leaves to help Ezra, she remains with the Ghost Crew on their path to liberate Ezra's homeworld of the Thal. That is the final arc in the Rebels animated series, as the epilogue sees her reunite with Ahsoka Tano to start a new journey that will be displayed in the upcoming series. Tia Sakaar voiced the character for all four seasons of Rebels, and Natasha Liu Berdizu will bring her into live action for Ahsoka. Moving on to Harrison Duel, the daughter of freedom fighter Champson Duel, who was featured during the liberation of Ryloth arc, in the Clone Wars. We then see the father-daughter duo once again in the Bad Batch as a young Hera helps the Batch free her parents from Imperial imprisonment. Hera would go on to become a stellar pilot leading the Ghost Crew in the wider rebellion as a general. She was also married to Ezra's master Kanan Jars, formerly known as Caleb Doom. He was just a young Padawan to Jedi Master Depa Balaba when Order 66 occurred as his life on the run began. He gave his life to save his friends on the Thal during the final season of Star Wars Rebels. Hera would fight on, carrying his child Jason, who we see in the epilogue of Rebels, as well as a brief glimpse at the back of his head in the Ahsoka trailer. General Sandula would remain a part of the Rebellion throughout the rule of the Galactic Empire, and up until present day, as we pick up her story in the upcoming series. She didn't go anywhere without her trusty droid companion Chopper, who she saved from a wreck ship during the Clone Wars, as he became one of my favorite droids in Star Wars next to R2-D2, with his antics in the Rebels series. Hera was voiced by Vanessa Marshall in all of her appearances both animation and video games, but now will be brought to life by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who you may know as the wife of Space Jesus or Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ewan McGregor. Then there's Gera Zebarelios, or popularly known as Zeb, who made his live-action debut in The Mandalorian Season 3, but it's unknown if he'll appear in this series. Zeb was the group's muscle, but before that, he was a captain of the Lasat military before the Empire destroyed their homeworld. During Rebels, he had a long-standing rivalry with Imperial Agent Callus, but after a near-death experience where the two helped each other survive, Callus realized the treachery of the Empire and began helping the Rebellion under a cold name Fulcrum. After they liberated the Thal, the two traveled to Lirasan, the new home of the Lasat people. Zeb would go on to fight for the Rebellion as we see in The Mandalorian. Zeb was voiced by Steve Blum in both Rebels and The Mandalorian, being brought to life through motion capture and CGI. Moving on to some of the villains we see featured in the series, I'm going to cover three of them in this section, that being Morgan Elsbeth, Balin Skull, and Shin Hadi, because they all have limited backstories. Starting with Morgan Elsbeth, we see her in The Mandalorian Season 2 on the planet Corvus with Imperial protection as she worked on finding a way to bring Grand Admiral Thrawn out of the Unknown Regions. She duels Ahsoka and loses, but it seems Lady Tano spares the Night Sister's life, as we'll pick up with her in the upcoming series. She is portrayed by Diana Lee and Asanto. Then there's Shin, who's an original character for Ahsoka. We see her sporting an orange blade in the trailers, but also a Jedi Padawan braid, which tells me she was very young when Order 66 occurred. She's confirmed to be a survivor of the Jedi Purge like her master, and will be brought to life in the series by Ivana Sakno. Finally, her master, Balin, who is also a survivor of the Purge, but much older as he speaks of Anakin Skywalker 
in the trailers. I'm assuming here, but I feel like we'll get a flashback of them meeting at the very least because the way it's phrased in the trailers, it sounds like they had met before. He will be portrayed by the late, great Ray Stevenson, who tragically passed away this summer and will be missed dearly. Then we have the big bad of the series, Grand Admiral Thrawn. I'm currently finishing up Timothy Zahn's original Thrawn trilogy, so I'm not going to waste your guys' time reading from Wikipedia. However, I will go over everything I know so far and the stuff from Star Wars Rebels as that seems to be the main version Filoni's drawing from. Thrawn was one of the greatest minds the galaxy ever saw. He could learn everything about his species just from their artwork, which he had a huge collection of, and served the Emperor in order to keep his people, the Chiss, safe. He hunted the Ghost Crew relentlessly through the later seasons of Star Wars Rebels and became accustomed with their group until Ezra Bridger used the Purgle, which is like the big space whales we see in uh, The Mandalorian Season 3 in hyperspace with Grogu, you know, the big scene, and to send both of them into the unknown regions where we'll find them in the new series. Thrawn's right-hand man, Captain Pallion, was featured in The Mandalorian Season 3 as a tease towards this show, and he's also mentioned in the Rebels finale as Thrawn calls out to his fleet when the Purgle attack. The Grand Admiral will be brought to live action by the same man who voiced him in the animated series, Lars Mikkelsen, with the creator Timothy Zahn having worked alongside Filoni in the series production. Moving on to the Jedi featured in this series, we'll start with Ezra Bridger. Ezra was just a rebellious boy from Lothal when he ran into the Ghost Crew while they were on a mission on his planet. Kanan recognized his potential, taking him as his Padawan, and the pair would then go on many missions together. Leading up to his master's death, Ezra had assumed a bigger role in the Rebellion, even leading his own missions as a lieutenant. He became very confident in the Force in the later seasons of the show as he would be the one to take out Grand Admiral Thrawn in the finale, as I said earlier, sending them both into the Unknown Regions. He had, a, he had a unique lightsaber until it was destroyed as it featured a blaster on its hilt to complement its blue blade. After that saber's destruction, he'd find a green crystal and construct his new saber, the one you see Sabine wield in the trailers, which he's modified slightly. Ezra was voiced by Taylor Gray in Rebels and will now be brought to life by Amanis Fondi in the Ahsoka show. And finally, the titular character, Ahsoka Tano. Ahsoka was taken to the Jedi Temple at a very young age by Jedi Master Plo Koon. She actually arrived at the Temple around the same time as young Anakin Skywalker, but obviously Skywalker is much older. She would later become his apprentice, earning the nickname Snips because of her reckless behavior, which little to say didn't change much as she was just like her master. Ahsoka fought alongside Anakin Skywalker and Captain Rex for most of the war, even going up against the droid General Grievous on her own after a mission to take a group of Padawans to Ilum got derailed. Before that happened though, while Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, and Anakin were on Mortis, Ahsoka suffered a near-death experience, but thanks to the daughter transferring her essence into her, she survived. This woman is why Ahsoka has since become associated with the Morai bird. After that, towards the end of the war, while on a mission with her master, the Jedi Temple was bombed. The pair were brought back in to investigate, but when they got too close, Ahsoka was framed for the bombing and the murder of a civilian. Obviously, we knew she was innocent, but the Jedi did not give her the benefit of the doubt and believed the falsified evidence until her master was able to bring the real culprit, there is Afi, to justice. But unfortunately, the Jedi had done too much damage and Ahsoka walked away from the Order as she would go on to live a normal life in the course on Underworld until the Martez sisters dragged her along on a spice run, which went haywire. While investigating the Pikes, she learned of Maul's plans for Mandalore met Lady bo -Katan. then the two contacted Masters Kenobi and Skywalker for assistance in retaking bo -Katan's home homeworld. While the Council was deciding whether or not they could lay siege on Mandalore, Anakin gave back her old sabers he'd kept, but as he said, a little better, as he gave her his former Padawan blue crystals in her dual sabers. But before they could head to Mandalore, the events of Revenge of the Sith take place as Palpatine is taken to Grievous' ship, so Anakin splits the 501st, promoting Rex to commander, and she goes on a mission with her old pal Rex. She defeated Maul on Mandalore, bringing his rule to an end, but as she was transporting him back to Coruscant to face trial, Order 66 was enacted, and the clone she'd served with for years betrayed her. She was able to separate Rex and get him to the Med Bay where she removed his chip, and the two had to fight their way off a ship full of some of their closest friends. The ship ended up going down, and before leaving, Rex and Ahsoka buried the entire crew of the ship along with her old lightsabers. We pick up her story into Star Wars Rebels as she helps the rebellion under codename Fulcrum and would join the Ghost Crew on many missions until they traveled to Malachor, defeating most of the remaining Inquisitors. Before the crew could escape though, Vader showed up and Ahsoka took them head on, saving Ezra's life and sacrificing herself. During this fight, she used her new sabers which had white crystals that she obtained from an Inquisitor and the Tales of the Jedi Stone purified them, hence turning them white. This would seemingly be her final fight until Ezra entered the World Between Worlds in Season 4 and pulled her through a portal, returning the favor, saving her life. The two went their separate ways right after this, only for Ahsoka to return to Sabine Wren to head on the adventure we'll witness 
in the upcoming show. Now, it's unclear whether her appearance in The Mandalorian takes place before or after the Rebels epilogue, but I'm personally assuming it's before and that she goes to get Sabine once she has a location for Thrawn and Ezra. She also appeared in the Book of Boba Fett where we get her first interaction with her master's son, Luke Skywalker. I'm not sure that we'll see any more of him in her show, but this was a great moment and in my head canon, one was trending the other as he built this temple, but it's not made clear. Tano does not have a confirmed death in canon, but it seems she is around during the time of the sequel trilogy based on some of Filoni's comments, So, and she will receive her own show almost 15 years to the date of her introduction in the Clone Wars movie as she's become a fan favorite over the years. Ahsoka was voiced in the Clone Wars, Rebels, and Tales of the Jedi by the lovely Ashley Eckstein and has been brought to live action by Rosario Dawson. Now to end the video, I want to go over some of the rumors for the show. I'll be referencing articles by Making Star Wars and Best from Both and during this section as they are the only two sources I personally trust when it comes to Star Wars leaks and rumors because they're the most accurate and reliable. First one is in regards to Ezra Bridger that said in his time without his lightsaber, he learned to use the force as a weapon in a martial arts style. Second one is that while in the world between worlds, we will see a possible outcome of the Clone Wars when Ahsoka and Obi-Wan travel to Mustafar to stop the newly crowned Darth Vader. Obi-Wan will be killed, but Ahsoka will still get the job done, taking down her former master. Third one is a, is a the series will feature at least one Loth Wolf, which were the four sensitive wolves seen in Season 4 of Rebels that had a connection to Kanan Jarrus. And the last one is that the series will end with Thrawn winning, leaving us with an Empire Strikes Back type of ending, uh, seemingly heading into Dave Filoni's movie as the Mandoverse culminates. I don't know about you guys, but I'm so goddamn excited for this show. Dave Filoni embodies so much of what George Lucas brought to this universe, but with his own touch. But I want to know how you guys are feeling going into this series and what you want to see, so go ahead and let me know all that down in the comments below. If you want to stay up to date with my coverage of the show, you can subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of my episode breakdowns as well as supporting me and my channel in the process. I appreciate you sticking with me through this video and I hope to see you all around the nerdverse in the future. Thank you once again for checking out my video and make sure you have a great day.